So welcome. If you're here, it's probably because you've either heard about geographically dispersed resiliency um, or you're trying to get a little bit more educated as far as different DR strategies and IBM power systems. Uh, my approach with this particular set of recordings is I'll do a, a multi-part series. Part one will just kind of introduce the concepts. Part two will be the actual demonstration in one of our uh, lab environments. And then part three, I'll do some more advanced functions. So to start things off, um, I figured I would go ahead and kind of um, allude to the fact that today, as we know it, it uh, the offering itself is called Geographically Dispersed Resiliency, or GDR. Um, the name will be changing by the end of the year. Uh, so what you'll see is the upcoming announcement of a VM Recovery Manager DR. Um, it'll maintain the same product ID as GDR, but it'll effectively become the new offering name. Today we're playing with the 1.2 release. Uh, by the end of 2018, you'll see that we'll have a 1.3 release. And if you take a look at the screen, you'll basically see that it'll be VM Recovery Manager DR uh, V1.3. Uh, don't hold me to the exact features. We have not formally announced that as of the time of this recording. Um, but the key piece is, is that the name is actually going to be changing and the product is actually going to fork off into two different offerings. So what you see on the screen is the evolution of the GDR offering. And then if I load up the remaining animation, you'll see that at the same time, we will also be releasing a VM Recovery Manager HA offering that will provide restart capabilities with local shared storage. It'll bring in new features, uh, just like the GDR that we know today. Um, it'll go ahead and be supported on Power 7, Power 8, and Power 9. And then uh, as we continue to announce and uh, release the new offering, I'll go ahead and provide some additional intellectual capital regarding that offering. Um, so for starters, if you don't know what GDR is, um, it's effectively designed to orchestrate um, the movement of VMs from one site to a remote site. Now, most folks are probably used to what you're seeing on the screen, maybe a pair of systems with some shared storage. You may have multiple LPARs or VMs in an environment, um, and you may be used to uh, mobility features like live partition mobility uh, or simplified remote restart with power 8 and on. Um, so if I virtualize the environment with Power VM, I may have capabilities to go ahead and move between systems that not only have VIO servers in place and are zoned appropriately, but uh, that are playing with shared storage and have a flat layer 2 network. Now, what's kind of come into play as uh, those technologies have evolved over the last several years is clients have started to ask, well, why can't I leverage that same type of functionality going from site to site? And if you look at the picture, you see that I kind of drew a ring across a pair of machines, and there may be more than two, uh, but I'm kind of limited to how far I can uh, map those same shared LUNs and then how far I can stretch that network. If I were to go from one site to a remote site and I had another system at the remote location, maybe he's got his own management console. He's also got VIO servers in play, uh, but it's a completely independent storage set. Um, we do support GDR with multiple storage subsystems. So the whole uh, Spectrum Virtualizer Storewise family um, is supported. We can leverage their block level replication. We support EMC SRDF and then we also support Hitachi uh, replication as well. And then uh, DS8000 is the last one. But now the question is, how do I get my VMs from site one to site two and effectively gain mobility capabilities? Uh, to do this, we're going to go ahead and leverage the block level replication, as I mentioned. We're going to replicate not only the data volumes, but the OS and the data volumes. So in order to go ahead and achieve that, the construct that you create with the GDR offering is you will effectively create a separate LPAR. He'll be your management LPAR. I painted him on top uh, as a CASIS controller. And what he will do is you will register your HMCs. So he'll have to have, you know, some type of communication or capability to talk to the HMCs at the primary site, uh, HMCs at the secondary site. He will also need to talk to your storage subsystems, hence why we have uh, support for various offerings. If we don't support that particular subsystem directly, GDR just wouldn't plain work. And then what we'll do is we'll pair the systems so in the existing release today, uh, whatever the source system is on the left-hand side, he will be paired up with the system at the remote location. And then those VMs can only move between those two machines. Um, 
we've had questions about uh, can I go from two to one that second machine that I've got painted on the bottom if I had a, uh, a second machine at the remote location they could move in tangent in that direction uh, as a future line item we'll have the capability to go two to one um, we can kind of circumvent it today and maybe define multiple cases controllers uh, but today you are doing a one-to-one -one mapping now by default when you do the initial discovery that cases management LPAR is going to go ahead and try to manage all of the VMs on the primary location so you see that I have you know AIX IVMI and Linux maybe virtualized VMs and I have a number of them that I, I drew them in as uh, unmanaged VMs uh, so maybe I don't want GDR to go ahead and touch those guys or maybe I'm only licensed uh, for the first three and I don't want to go ahead and have to pay to go ahead and gain mobility capabilities for those other VMs they're not critical so I can go ahead and do the initial discovery uh, it'll try to manage everything but then I can go in and tell it to go ahead and unmanage the remaining VMs so I can say hey GDR only touch these particular guys now what that will effectively give me is the ability for that cases controller whenever I'm ready to go ahead and initiate the operation to go ahead and if I'm doing a plan move it'll destage the VMs gracefully and then it'll go ahead and bring them online at the remote location it does the management uh, of the creation of the LPAR from the ground up it also manipulates the storage level replication so whenever I'm ready to move back it'll go ahead and gracefully shut them down and then again uh, delete them off of that server and then recreate the LPARs and manage the replication on the source site. Uh, so if I were to do the configuration from the ground up, same type of deal, uh, it doesn't matter what the VMs are, whether they're AIX, uh, IVMI, or Linux, and we support the various distros, uh, but I'm going to have to do the installation of that cases controller, and effectively if I take you through the steps, um, I'm going to have to define an actual cluster name, even though he's a single VM, you are going to go ahead and give that cluster a name itself. So here's the sample syntax. Uh, you'll notice that the commands are all based on the cases manager operation. So step one would be cases manager add the cases cluster. I happen to give him a name. I'm playing with release uh, 120 service pack one. So that I call my cluster that. And then my node name. Um, step two would be to define site definitions. Uh, once I create the cluster name and I proceed, I don't necessarily have to follow this uh, this order, but I went ahead and did it this way, so just be conscious of that. But when I define the sites, uh, for simplicity's sake in my environment, I called site 1 the primary, site 2 the secondary. In your environment, you may call it site 1, site 2, or you might give it uh, geographical location names. And uh, very simple command, so cases manager add, notice that the primary site is defined as the active one, and then that the secondary site, I went ahead and I defined them as a uh, site type of backup. And then step three, I'll register the HMCs as I mentioned before. Um, here are the commands, so cases manager add the HMC. Notice that I do have to feed it the password, this is a one-time config. Um, one is bound to the primary site, the second one is bound to the secondary site. And then step four, I mentioned that I was going to go ahead and pair my hosts. Um, so first I need to define the host definitions. Even though he's going to go ahead and discover them, you're going to go ahead and say, this is host one, this is host two, and I'm going to create a host pair. So the steps here are cases manager add host. Notice that I've got the primary one defined. He's bound to site one or the primary site. And then uh, the second host, I define them to the secondary site. And then I'm going to go ahead and pair them. So again, the VMs located within those hosts will effectively just move between those two guys. Um, and the last step, step five, I'm going to go ahead and register the storage subsystems with that cases management LPAR. So in order to go ahead and do that, I'm going to go ahead and feed it the storage agent names. So I, in this particular configuration, I'm playing with store-wise storage. So the first one's called master SVC. You see the host name, storage type is SVC, and then the additional credentials. Uh, again, this is a one-time config. On the second side, I've got a V9000, and I am leveraging native IP replication between the two locations. So again, all I do is I register this piece, and I'm pretty much done with the actual configuration. Um, now, I do have to go ahead and discover the VMs and then decide which ones it's going to manage and unmanage. Uh, I'll get into more detail on that when I do the actual demonstration, and I do the more advanced uh, recording. Uh, but from there on out, once I've done the initial configuration, it's a matter of doing a discovery and a verification. I combine them into a single command. Um, I can easily... Uh, 
do the operation uh, for the discovery first and then do a verification, which just kind of does a validation of things. Again, that initial discovery operation is what's going to go ahead and manage every single VM that it sees. Uh, I can come in after the fact and go ahead and unmanage whatever I don't want it. Uh, I don't want GDR to touch. And then whenever I'm ready to go ahead and do a, uh, a movement operation, there I'm showing the syntax of a move from site one to site two. It'd be a cases manager move site from primary to secondary site. It's as simple as that. Now, it would be a little bit different if it was an unplanned outage where I did not have access to the source systems. And again, in the more advanced recordings, I'll go ahead and I'll get into that. Uh, but fundamentally, you may have an environment where you have multiple hosts in site one, multiple hosts of the remote location. So notice that the best practice is that for it's for that uh, cases management LPAR to live at their secondary location. Uh, now, behind the scenes, you may be replicating him from site two back to site one. So in the event that you did a site move, maybe you want to go ahead and relocate the cases controller. So at least you have that management LPAR available at the primary location whenever you're ready to come back. Now, if that cases management LPAR lived in the same location that the VMs existed, as long as you didn't lose, you you know, network connectivity or access to that VM, you'd be fine. Um, so he, it doesn't really matter where he lives, but as a best practice, you're going to want him to be online on the site that's actually still alive. Now, initiating the movement operation, if I did just the first five steps, uh, did the discovery and verification, and I wanted to initiate a move, by default, if I had registered all of these hosts and pair them up, um, it's going to go ahead and take all of the VMs and bring them offline. He's going to go ahead and stand them up at the remote location. So he handles, this is very hands-off, uh, he handles all the creation of the uh, profiles, st standing up the VMs, and then redirecting the replication. And whenever I'm ready to move back, it would be the reverse. It would be move site from secondary back to primary. Uh, so again, it's going to try to do as many uh, VM operations or movement operations as it can in parallel. You can set priorities and get a little bit fancier if you wanted to, uh, but by default, it's going to try to move, I think, uh, up to 32 VMs in one shot. Now, you can take this a step further and um, move individual host pairs. I'll show you that in just a sec. Uh, so to actually explain that, uh, I'll kind of show you what we had initially. So um, I'm showing a snapshot of the consistency groups that we had manually created when we were manually moving VMs from one site to the secondary site. And you'll see that I had a VM15 and a VM17 created. Um, it shows that they were consistent synchronized and it shows all of the LUN relationships that I had for the source LUNs and the target LUNs. When you bring GDR into an actual environment, um, you're going to have to delete those consistency groups. And the actual discovery process, it's going to go ahead and create the consistency group with its own name. So on the bottom, after I deleted the source VMs, you'll see that it created a VM, uh, VMR DG or uh, disk group. And he gave him his own name. Now he encapsulated all of the LUNs uh, for th the VMs that it was actually managing. In this instance, it happened to only be two VMs. So uh, when I said that you can take it to a, a lower level or of granularity, uh, this is an example of that. So I may have a host on site A, host on site B, and they may be paired up. Um, in addition to the default host group that gets created that gives me the capability to move the entire site, um, I can go ahead and also define individual host groups. So the consistency groups would get rebuilt if I define host groups. And what you'll see is the VMs up on top would be part of disk group one. If I define another host group, uh, that would be a separate set of disks and a separate consistency group. And then uh, my host groups don't have to be just a single host on site one, a single host uh, on site B. That host group level of granularity could be multiple hosts. So you see that for my host group C on the bottom left, I actually took two systems and uh, they might have different pairs at the remote location. Uh, but whenever I get ready to do a host group move, I could move two instead of moving all four in one shot by doing a site move. Uh, so you'll notice that behind the scenes, it would go ahead and create a separate consistency group. So my syntax would go ahead and change if I was going to do a move at the host group level. So cases manager move, host group, uh, whatever my host group was called. Here I just kind of showed a space holder. Uh, maybe I'm moving host group A from the primary site to the secondary site. And what that would do is only move that particular slice. Uh, so if you have different areas of the business and you didn't want to necessarily do an entire site move, had you defined the host groups, you would have that level of granularity. And on the bottom, you'll basically see that in my host group. Um, 
the access to the target lens would become available. We would go ahead and relocate only those VMs, and we would go ahead and redirect the replication of only that host group. So you have that level of granularity. Uh, we have gotten asked, well, can I move just individual VMs? Uh, today, the only way that I could actually achieve that is whatever I was managing, if it was only those two VMs, I would have to unmanage one of the other VMs, maybe redo a discovery and verification, and then whenever I move, since it would only be managing one of the VMs, it would move only that VM from one side to the other side. Um, that's the only way that you could do it today. As a future line item, you'll have uh, VM level granularity, but if you look at how the plumbing is working at the very bottom with the different disk groups, you'd see that if you were going to do VM level control, there would have to be individual consistency groups created by GDR to give you that level of granularity. Uh, the, the last piece is when we normally discuss this uh, for education purposes, we talk, you know, we try to keep it simple and we do plan moves where it brings the VMs offline on the source site. Um, now, uh, there may be a, a situation where the primary site is down unexpectedly, uh, so you don't have access to those machines. Maybe you don't have access to the HMC on the primary site, uh, all the servers may be offline, maybe you, you took a power hit. Um, in that scenario, the cases management LPAR is not designed uh, like as a power HA cluster, for example, where it'll trigger an automated failover. You would still have to execute the command to get that failover to take place from site one to site two. But the systems don't have to be online on the primary location for you to be able to initiate that move. All that's going to change when you initiate that cases manager move operation is your syntax. In this scenario, it's the same thing I did before, cases manager move site from the first site to the second site, but I did a DR type equals unplanned. Uh, there's additional flags that I could append to it to not try to check if the source HMC and systems were actually there. Um, but for simplicity's sake, all that would change is it's a DR type unplanned, so I don't have to worry about shutting down on the source site. What that will do is that will go ahead and create the VMs and let me go ahead and come online. It'll redirect the replication. And then the only difference here would basically be on the primary location. Um, whenever the systems do come back online and I regain access to my HMC and my servers, I'd have to do an actual cleanup. So if I do a cases manager cleanup site primary, he would then go ahead and delete the source VMs. Um, so hopefully you got the gist. This was just an introduction pitch, so you at least kind of saw the flow. Um, in the second recording in part two, I'll do an actual demonstration, so I'll describe what I have set up in the lab and go through the motions, and you'll basically see the VMs going from one HMC to the other side. Uh, thanks for listening.